Fox Sports. We are Baltimore. We are St. Louis. This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. And tonight from PNC Park, it's a weekend series. The St. Louis Cardinals and the Pittsburgh Pirates game one of three. Inside the Central Division as we start the second half. Chicago and St. Louis, identical records, five and a half games out. Pittsburgh starting seven games back of Milwaukee. Jim Hayes is here. That's the Mad Hungarian Al Robosky. I'm Dan McLaughlin. The second half is here. So what are some of those storylines that Al Robosky is looking for here in the second half? Well, I think what you can think about the first half was the starting pitching was very, very good. Yes, it did have a little bad spell, but for five starters all the way through with just one emergency start for a, a double header, they have been consistent. And think about the call-ups that we've gotten from Memphis. Tommy Pham, DeYoung, you know, Martinez, all these different guys have contributed. Luke Voigt of late, they've all contributed quite a bit. I think those are the real positives, but maybe some of the cons. The inconsistent offense struggled at times. Hopefully we'll get that back on track, and we have to run the bases a lot better. Just saw Randall Gritchick there. He's been put on the 10-day DL. So not here in Pittsburgh. Jose Martinez has been called up. There's been some other moves as well. We'll tell you about that when we come back. It is Cardinals baseball here tonight. It's Garrett Cole and Mike Lake. And we'll also during the telecast, we'll take a look around Major League Baseball and some of the storylines, not only with the Cardinals, but around the game today.
St. Louis Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light, famous among friends. By Chevy Silverado, the most dependable, longest lasting full size pickups on the road. Find yours at your local Mid America Chevy dealer. By Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors for all for less. The skyline of the city of Pittsburgh, one of the great venues for the game today, PNC Park, which opened up back in 2001. The lineups have been exchanged, and the Pirates take the field. And some Cardinal fans here tonight as we get you set for the second half of Major League Baseball. Matt Carpenter is in the leadoff spot, and he's had pretty good numbers against Garrett Cole. 12 for 32 and among those 12 hits four home runs and Matt Carpenter has solidified that spot at the top of the lineup for the Cardinals. Yeah he seems like he hits very well there. Fowler's in the three hole so the double leadoff men are separated by one but Carpenter with those numbers against Garrett Cole that would be really what the Cardinals need to break out on top. The Hyundai pitch arsenal for Garrett Cole. The fastball slider change in curve. He's seven and seven this year with a 4.43 ERA. He's won four of his last, uh, last five starts. That includes a win over the Cardinals, in which he gave up just one run over six innings. So the Cardinals running into a hot pitcher here tonight. And a pitcher that could be on the move. It's Glenn Hurdle's team trying to decide what they're going to do, but. A lot of people would think Garrett Cole could command maybe three, four prospects and help out the team in the long run. So Matt Carpenter will lead things off, and then it'll be Tommy Pham, as Al mentioned, dropping Dexter Fowler in this lineup to the third spot. And no Luke Voigt in the lineup tonight, which is something that we should talk about because Colt Long is back. He's activated. And so Mike Matheny is going to have to be uh, creative with this lineup. I asked Michael Gersh, the Cardinals general manager, I said, do you think you're going to get enough at bats for uh, Voigt? He said, absolutely. You know, here you have the ability to pinch it or a tough left-hander on the mound. Carpenter would go to second base. Voigt would start at first base. But uh, they're... They also made the point too, Danny, that Luke Voigt is not a 21, 22 year old prospect. You know, so he can be late 20s, you come up here and, and you can have that job and not really, uh, and get enough at bats to keep him sharp. That's their hope. So there's the lineup Carpenter, Fam, Fowler, Jerko is batting cleanup, then Molina, is Scotty Wong, the young, who's been red hot prior to the break, and the pitcher, Mike Leake. And the first pitch of the second half is taken for a ball by Carpenter, who is tied with Fowler for the home run lead, both with 14. Matt with a 16 game on base streak. What's interesting about it is that he's getting on base a lot, obviously. On base percentage of 384, and yet only a 218 average during the 16 games he's been on base. One ball, one strike to count. It's four. 400 in his last three games and he also leads the major leagues in walks. That's where he keeps that on base percentage up. And a pitch taken low two balls and one strike keys to the game will be this matchup. Matt Carpenter against the right hander Garrett Cole. And that's it down the left field line it is slicing and foul just foul. And it's two and two. The last start for Garrett Cole was a 5 2 win over the Phillies. The previous start against the Giants, he gave up 10 hits in five and a third, which was a loss. And he said the second half is about consistency. He's been up and down this year. Look at his last seven games. It's either seven earned runs allowed or two or fewer, nothing in between. Just missed as Cervelli holds that pitch. Jerry Lane, the crew chief, calling the balls in strikes. Three and two, the count on Carpenter. Just outside, but you see a good job of framing it, trying to 
steal a strike. And the 3 2 pitch is a fly ball hit out to center. McCutcheon makes the catch, and Andrew McCutcheon has been on a tear recently for the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pirates defensively with Adam Frazier in left Andrew McCutcheon is in center Gregory Polanco is in right freeze Mercer Harrison the all star bell along the infield Cervelli is behind the plate and around the horn is presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. We'll have to, Pirates will have to wait till Tuesday to activate Marte and his 80 game suspension. And that's a base hit for Tommy Pham into right field. He was three for three on Sunday left the game early with right hip tightness and he may have been the Cardinals best player in the first half. Yeah, he came up on what was it May the fifth but he's been on quite a tear ever since then and playing very well defensively the team leader in stolen bases he's on the National League leaderboard you know at the temp spot there with 11 steals. And now it's Dexter Fowler. Fam was saying after the game on Sunday that if he would have been up and started the season and an everyday player, Tommy Fam said, I would have been an all star this year. I saw that. And it's fouled back. As we mentioned during the open, Randall Gritchick is on the 10 day DL. So, in terms of trying to be creative in the outfield, more than likely this will be the trio that you see with Pham, Fowler and Piscotty at least for the moment. I would expect them to be run out there virtually every day. And the 0 2 pitch instead of check on Pham who's been caught four times. Teams have run against Garrett Cole the most of anybody on the Pirates staff. And Cervelli is only at 22%, so this might be a good combination for Tommy Pham. One ball and two strikes. Cervelli, a real favorite around here with the Pirates and fans, and good to see him off that concussion disabled list. Really scary, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, to think about some of these catchers and Pitch taken outside and it's two and two. The Cardinals have won four of the six meetings between these two teams. Thirteen more left and that includes tonight and ten of the thirteen here in the Steel City. This is our first visit this year to Pittsburgh. And the Pirates have already been to St. Louis twice. The two two instead another check on Tommy Pham. Because see Cole was very deliberate. So if Tommy gets the jump he's desiring, you expect him to run. And there he goes. Pretty good jump, and it's fouled back. Al mentioned that Starley Marte returns from his 80 game suspension for Clint Hurdle's club. That'll be on Tuesday night. And Clint recently saying that uh, once he returns, Marte does not play center field. That job belongs now to Andrew McCutcheon. And that was one of their big uh, storylines in the first month or so. Yeah, at the beginning of the season, it was uh, McCutcheon in right field and Marte playing our center. Rolled up the first base line, but foul. Polanco was in left. So, I mean, the, every one of them had to move. That suspension happened in St. Louis. And you may recall that uh, McCutcheon made a catch and our cameras caught it. And he started screaming, This is my spot. This is my spot. Talking about center field. Well, he's hit, the way he's hitting right now, he can play wherever he wants. Over the last month, he's batting over 400. And you wonder if he would possibly be a. Uh, out there dangled to see who would uh, what they'd offer. 2 2 is spoiled by Fowler. It's been talk about today's starter, Garrett Cole. 
even though he is signed through the 2019 season so he's under team control but yet his name has been floated out there a bunch here recently. And the 2 2 pitch again to Dexter Fowler. Inside, 3 and 2. You see Pham take off on this next pitch, more than likely. Dexter's had some success against Cole with a couple home runs, so pitching him very carefully, falling behind in the count. And it's two batters and two full counts now. There goes Pham, the 3 2, and it's driven out to right field, backing up Polanco near the wall, and he makes the catch. And Pham retreats back to first base as Dexter Fowler gave it a ride, trying to pick up his 14th home run from that side of the plate. And he had, what, 13 all last year already. Got the home run numbers, the power numbers. So here are the roster moves over the All Star break. Colton Wong activated playing tonight. Kevin Segrist in the Cardinals pen. And Jose Martinez brought up yesterday after they got word about Randall Gritchick. Also, Alex Mejia and Luke Weaver optioned to AAA Memphis. Two outs and a runner at first. Jed Jerko led St. Louis in average hits and RBIs in the first half. Very solid year for him and played very good defensively. The 0 1 instead, another check on Pham. That to me is what stood out about Jed Jerko. I think we saw last year he was going to hit for some power, especially against left handed pitching, but his defense has been much better, I think, than most believe it could be. Yeah, and, and we. Kind of felt like he was his best position was second base, but you know here at the beginning of the season he was supposed to be on the bench. Tommy Pham was in Memphis, so you could see two of the guys that had the best first halves really weren't supposed to be in the lineup every day. No balls and two strikes. Tommy Pham, your runner at first base. I didn't know what to do with myself Al the last four nights no baseball you weren't around I, I just didn't know what to do. OK Uber. <laughs> That's what I did do I ran the kids everywhere that you said at nighttime. That's you right. The daytime you were Uber Uber dad. It extended into some nights too. <laughs> Bam is not running. They pitch out. The count is two and two. When you got a base runner like that, you saw Tommy Pham started to go and then stops because he noticed something different in the delivery on the pitch out. You know, a lot of pitchers will telegraph it, and our base runner will sit there and say, I'm not sure what he's doing, but I know it's a little bit different, and they stop. The 2 2. Jerko rips it foul. Very slow, methodical as Garrett Cole, and does have a slow delivery to the plate. This already his 15th start of his career against the Cardinals. That includes the playoffs. Seven and five with an ERA of 2.69. Mike Leak is making his 31st start Incredible. against uh, the Pirates today. 31. Yeah, with good success. 10 and 5 record with a 333 ERA. The 2 2. A little quicker delivery, and it's taken outside. Ball in the gap, and that may score Tommy Pham. And that's what happens when you try and quicken your delivery to. Stop a base dealer, but you don't have the command of the strike zone. So you're always pitching behind the count. Another full count. 3 2, there goes Pham, and that's driven out to deep right center field. McCutcheon back at 
the wall and it's gone. Jed Jerko with home run number 14 and it's 2 nothing St. Louis. One of the deepest parts of this ballpark in Jerko with RBIs 46 and 47 and it's 2 nothing Cardinals. He just came back from West Virginia went home so it was about an hour back here to Pittsburgh full count look breaking ball and left it in the middle of the plate and he gave it a ride. Here's the all star Yadier Molina speaking of home runs the seventh Cardinal to homer in the all star game and first since 1974 when Reggie Smith did it. Ask me about Reggie Smith. He could do it all. Just a tremendous athlete. Going to the count. This was Tuesday night in Miami, and the home run by Yadier Molina. Up for Urban Santana. Don't see many home runs hit by right handed hitters the opposite way in Miami. So tough to pitch today. Ball is so hard and lively. Taking away foul territory. The ballparks are smaller. And it used to be that even the big guys, rarely would they ever hit the opposite field home run. And now you see middle infielders taking the ball the other way and out of the ballpark. One two pitch. Back to Garrett Cole. Steps and throws and makes the play. As Al mentioned, a lot of times in this top of the first going deep into counts. And on a 3 2 pitch to Jed Jerko, knocks it out for a two run lead. The exit velocity 100 miles an hour and then the fan threw on about 100 miles an hour into the Allegheny. He's mad <laughs> and maybe John Mosellock should sign him up. That's that's an upset fan right there. If you're that upset why you catch it. Out of your way to do it. The Hyundai pitch arsenal. For Mike Leake. We may see that uh, that fan pitching in the seventh or the eighth later tonight. Call him up. Hopefully for them. Adam Frazier is 50th start in the leadoff position for Clint Hurdle's club. And most on their team after Marte was suspended. Frazier seen a lot of the time at second base and in left field. It's Frazier Harrison McCutcheon then Bell Freeze Polanco Cervelli Mercer and Cole. Round ball up the middle and a base hit. I think the all-star break came at the right time for Frazier. He was 0 for 20 before getting that base hit. 
the Cardinals defensively around the horn presented by Dobbs Pham Fowler Piscotti in the outfield Jerko DeYoung Wong and Carpenter on the infield and Yadier Molina is behind the plate the Cardinals plus 22 in defensive runs saved in the first half of the season which was fifth in the major leagues and a lot of that had to do with Jed Jerko at third base. Here's Josh Harrison who played the final four innings at second base the All Star game in Miami. And he looks at a strike looked like he may have tried to call time and it wasn't granted by Jerry Lane. He said their lone representative the All Star. He was designated by Joe Madden as the player who could re enter the game for the National League. Because of his versatility. Yeah. Broke into the major leagues in 2011, playing five different positions. And now he's a two time All Star and a very good player. Here's a 1 1 pitch. One ball and two strikes. As we told you, Mike Leake, no stranger to the Pirates. 31st career start against Pittsburgh here tonight. 10 and 5 overall. Those 10 wins are the most against any team that he's faced, and a good ERA of 2.89, the BJC Healthcare Difference Maker. He's won nine of his last 11 decisions against the Pirates. Of course, the only two that he didn't win were two losses wearing the Cardinal uniform last year, but 1 0 this year. And the 1 2. Tapped foul. For whatever reason, Harrison likes hitting in the first inning, batting over 300 in the first inning. Here's where we noticed him a few years ago now that when he first came on the scene because of that versatility of playing all over the plate. And that uh, he could swing the bat a little bit. A quick move there by Leak. It's been five stolen base attempts against Mike Leak. He does a very good job in terms of bearing up his speeds to the plate and in terms of right handed pitchers. One of the best moves in the game. Very close again. He's a good athlete, quick feet. It's the key for him. Bill Brock would say, okay, you got back easily, go take another step. The Cardinals are taking a uh, longer look at this. Carpenter kind of looked in the dugout like saying, you know, hey, think about it. Body possibly may have gotten him. Blair doesn't think so. And the one two waved at it and struck him out. So the first out here in the bottom of the first to strike out of Josh Harrison. A sweeping breaking ball. McCutcheon with 83 at bats against Mike Lee. That's the most of any pitcher in the big leagues that he's faced. 265 average, couple of home runs, and he's driven in six. Leads your club in doubles, walks. Average has jumped up to 294. And since the end of May, he's hitting above 400. The Pirates hold an option on McCutcheon for next year at a little over $14 million. And for his type of production, that's Just pretty deal. reasonable. Yeah. Now there's kind of dangling him out all winter long, trying to see if anybody wanted to bite. His knee must be a lot healthier this year than 
Well, he's hitting so much better. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Popped up to the right side. Carpenter is over. Out of room. And it's no balls and two strikes. McCutcheon, a very proud guy, as we saw in St. Louis. Once Marte was suspended, he wants to play center field. A five time All Star. He's been an MVP. And now in his ninth year here in Pittsburgh. Really was the talk this winter around the Pirates whether or not McCutcheon would still be here. Most believe he would have been traded. 0 2 again is popped up right side. Carpenter over and out of play. A year ago he hit 256 with 24 home runs and 79 RBIs. He's got uh, 294 average now. 19 doubles, two triples, 17 home runs, and 50 RBIs. So he's bounced back well. And the 0-2 pitch. He got him. Wow. Strike out of McCutcheon on a late swing. Back-to-back -back strikeouts of Harrison and the Pirates center fielder Andrew McCutcheon. Very awkward late swing. Got a breaking ball and must not have picked that up at all. Mike Leach, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's for a career or not, but at least this year he's pitching much better on the road. He's coming off a poor start. You get a look at Josh Bell, switch hitting first baseman. Leak his last start, shortest outing of the year. That was against the Marlins. He went three and two thirds. But you get the extra rest, and we'll see if that benefits him tonight. As you know, Al, it's a, a fine line with starting pitching. They are creatures of habit, and sometimes the extra rest doesn't necessarily mean better results. Yeah, remember, like Michael Walker got 11 days rest. You know, it made perfect sense. They're doing that for his benefit and to conserve his energy or his innings for late in the season. And yet after that he really struggled for three or four starts. Lance Lynn and Jamison Tyon tomorrow. And then Carlos Martinez and Trevor Williams. The ball game here on Sunday. It was 29 pitches in the first inning for Garrett Cole and this will be number 15 in the first for Mike Leake. Now Bell had 16 home runs in the first half. And that's a new Pirates rookie record. Ralph Kiner had 15 back in 1946 as a rookie. He's hitting five straight, nine of his last 11. Ranger's going to be tired. Yeah. I say Bell's going to get some consideration for National League Rookie of the Year, but he'll finish distant from the top. Bellinger got it. It's done right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what would that be? The 18th, I think, Dodger to have a Rookie of the Year honor. Might be the MVP, too. Dodgers have just taken off since he was called up and inserted into the uh, lineup. 3 1 pitch and Bell takes a ball. Runners at first and second with two outs. Mike Leak walks very few, so unusual to see him walking somebody and have a couple base runners in an inning. This is the one guy that Leak does not want to face. In a spot where he could do some damage, that's David Freeze, who's 16 for 34, four doubles and a home run off of Mike Leake. This is game number 800 in his career at third base, with 427 of those wearing the birds on the bat. There's the numbers you were talking about, Dan. 
and so often when you have somebody that you know that gives you uh, trouble you say the last thing I want to do is walk a hitter in front of them and, and yet you do it one ball and one strike David's over his last 10 wonder if a guy like David Freeze could be on the move for let's say a team like Boston just released yeah. Pablo Sandoval and they owe him forty nine million dollars to go home and they it's popped up on the infield Matt Carpenter makes the catch we'll talk more about that when we come back the Pirates strand a couple a Jed Jerko two run homer the difference so far. For live Cardinals baseball. Stay connected. A fully customizable experience. Get Cardinals home screen icons and much more. MLB.com at bat today. So, Boston, they are three and a half in front of New York and Tampa Bay. Released Pablo Sandoval, who had nearly $50 million left on his contract. He signed a five year, $90 million deal. So what the Red Sox got out of that is a total of 161 games parts of two and a half years and a minus two wins above replacement. Wow. Here's Steven Piscotti with a fly ball into right center and McCutcheon calls for it and has it Johnny Peralta by the way the former Cardinal a few days ago was also released he was at Pawtucket their AAA affiliate. Yeah. Think back when uh, Pablo Sandoval signed that contract. It just seemed like an odd choice for him to go to Boston. Really was loved in in the Bay Area. Could have played for the Giants. If he would have gone through the down times, they still would have cheered him on and for what he did in winning World Series. But just didn't seem like that was a fit that was going to work out. Seemed a perfect fit for the Bay Area. He was a part of all three of their championships. Here's Colton Wong. Dealt with a right tricep strain and a left elbow strain that put him on the DL. And overlooked, but he was leading the Cardinals in average and on base percentage when he went out. And he pops this pitch up to David Freeze. Two away. More efficient this inning for Garrett Cole. Hopefully, Paul DeYoung, who's uh, red hot. Boy, he, I'm sure he hated to see the All Star break the way he was swinging the bat. I asked him if he'd ever had a series like the one we just witnessed last weekend Little League, high school, college. He said no, wasn't even close. 
Old Young homered three straight went nine for 12 against the Mets. Marty Marion is the only Cardinals shortstop to homer in four straight. He did that back in 1950. Marty Marion was the first shortstop to win the MVP ever. Did that back in 1944. He's already been inducted into the Cardinals Hall of Fame. He's a part of four pennant winners. Stan the man said who finished fourth that year in the MVP. It was a credit to his defense which at the time always you, you looked at offensive numbers but he said Marty Marion won that MVP because of defense. And that's the thing that people talked about the old timers would talk about his defense was so good. Two and two the count. And he was big man too. Tall. And a grounder that softly hit to freeze. The Cardinals go one, two, three in the top of the second. Coming up, Polanco, Cervelli, and Mercer. Two nothing St. Louis. Dan Colton Wong is back after missing 24 games with that right tricep strain. He had a rehab assignment in Springfield, then a few days off for the All Star break, and Colton told me he feels great. He told me the pain is gone. I had some good at bats down in my rehab assignment. I was making throws I wasn't able to make before. Wong has battled through the triceps issue along with a left elbow strain and a right forearm issue. He told me he thinks the triceps issue is behind him but there are no guarantees. He said I'll just follow the program the trainers put together for me and I should be fine. And Dan Colton also should be well rested after a few relaxing days at the Lake of the Ozarks. Yeah good to see him back. Brad Cecil also went to the Ozarks and Jim you had John Moselock uh, the president of baseball operations on the pregame show as Polanco looks at a ball trade deadline rumors are flying what did John have to say about the trade deadline well he said he definitely looks at uh, the central as an opportunity for the Cardinals to get in the playoffs but in terms of what deals they may be planning to make or possibly could make he he's been a long uh, proponent of, of not making that public he wants Cardinal fans to know that they are looking at every possible deal to make the Cardinals better for the short term or possibly the long term. But right now there's nothing he wants to make public. I asked him specifically about Lance Lynn and whether there are talks going on with Lance to possibly keep Lance in a Cardinal uniform. And he said that's part of his posture of not going public with nego negotiations, Dan. All right, Jimmy, thank you. 
Uh, we just saw that little yeah, yeah. tapper that was hit up the first base line, and Mike Leak went to throw it out, and it went towards Colton Wong. It went backwards. <laughs> That's why all the puzzled look to the from Mike Matheny to the players on the, on the bench. Okay, now he's going to flip it out. <laughs> <laughs> Polanco with a ground ball to Colton Wong for the first out here in the home half of the second. And it brings in Francisco Cervelli. That's what Mike Lee can do. Fourth best in the National League in inducing ground balls. Cervelli at his third career grand slam on Sunday. That was at Wrigley Field against John Lester and the Cubs. They scored 10 runs in the first inning in that yeah. game. The shortest outing of Lester's career. Now, one thing we've been talking about a lot, not just the offense of Paul DeYoung, but also his defense. And Pop Warner, who is roving the minor leagues, really worked with Mark DeJean. Who's in the minor leagues as well, a coach with Paul DeYoung. They said he was a stuck to the ground type defender when he first started. Both legs even, did not walk into the pitch. And now th what they've done is really extended the left leg as the pitch comes in. So he's got a little momentum going in, walks into the pitch, which he did not do, but you'll see he takes a very big left step on that first pitch. Or second pitch or third pitch of the at bat. They don't want him to be stationary. Walk in on your toes, be able to move. Like that. And the young moving in makes the catch. Don't you love it, Al, when they hit one right to the guy you're talking about? Oh, I, I love it. And also, he's committed three errors on, the, but none at shortstop. There's that step you were talking about and get your momentum going forward. And so it was easy to reach down and get the one off the line drive off the shoot top. And the way that Pop was describing it, Pop Warner, is that he has a, a more aggressive step with that left leg, more so than maybe some other infielders that just take a half step in. Good play by Jerko on the backhand, and he throws a strike over to Carpenter. And an 11 pitch inning for Mike Leak. We head to the third. Leak leads it off when we come back. Those baseball is brought to you by your local St. Louis area Volkswagen dealers. And Jack in the Box, come try the sweet or spicy barbecue bacon cheeseburger combo for $4.99, limited time only. So Mike Leak on a foul ball, threw it out towards second. He's not going to hear the end of this. Whoop. 
You know Lance Lynn is going to make sure and get a uh, word in edgewise. <laughs> and he's hearing about it. You got to have a little fun in this game. You know you do and usually how you have fun is to win. But uh, you do have to have a little comic relief at times. Oh and to the count on Mike Leak who's batting 171. But what isn't funny is a 300 hitter off of Garrett Cole. Three for ten with a home run. And the 0 2. Puts it in play. There's David Freeze. It's five in a row after the two run homer hit by Jed Jerko back in the first. Garrett Cole originally selected in the first round of the 2008 draft. That was by the Yankees and a first round pick and did not sign. He then went to UCLA, was the number one overall pick in the country by the Pirates in 2011. And that draft class produced two UCLA pitchers in the top three. Trevor Bauer went number three. Garrett Cole was number one overall. Bauer went to Arizona. The breaking ball taken down and in for the Cardinals. That was the draft that produced Colton Wong, number 22 overall. Some guys that have major league experience. Charlie Tilson, who was part of the Zach Duke deal. Round ball foul. Seth Manis just released by Kansas City. Ryan Sheriff, who is a Triple-A All-Star left-hander, we may see him before this year is through. Zach Duke, by the way, very close in talking with John Mozeliak to returning to the Cardinals. They want to see him pitch back-to-back -back games, take a day off, and then come back and pitch the next day. And once he can do that, you're going to see him here with the Cardinals. All right, he did a very good job with the Cardinals. Pitched an awful lot the second half after being acquired at the trade deadline a year ago. And that was a real blow. He found out he needed Tommy John. I talked to Zach. He said for nine years he had a partial tear in that uh, ligament. A little bit low. Here Cole a couple of times is spun away from the home plate umpire upset with the strike zone. Two and two the count Carpenter fly to center. To start this night. Back in the first inning. And that time catches the inside portion of the plate first strikeout for Garrett Cole. July 28th it's a Friday night 30,000 fans 16 and older have the opportunity to take home a replica of the 1967 World Series trophy this version stands at six and a half inches tall it's an item you don't want to miss the 67 trophy giveaway Diamondbacks will be in town Cardinals.com slash promotions to get your tickets. The Red Hot Tommy Pham coming into play tonight. Last 14 games, he's driven in 12 and hitting 383. Talked about the stolen bases. It's up to 11 and 11 home runs. And he's the first Cardinal since the 2009 campaign and Albert Pujols to have 10 home runs, 10 stolen bases at the break. So the combination of speed and power that he's shown and very good defense wherever you put him. He's always considered one of the best athletes in the Cardinal system. Now we're getting a chance to see that athleticism. The 2 1 pitch. And a ground ball that's hit to short. Gloved by Mercer. Throws off balance. And the stretch by Josh Bell. Seven in a row for Garrett Cole. He'll lead it off when we come back.
a look at the National League West. We'll be taking a look around Major League Baseball tonight. Get you caught up on the second half. Best in the National League. Their starters anchored by the great Clayton Kershaw. The offense has taken off. Cody Bellinger made his Major League debut back on the 25th of April, and he hasn't slowed down one bit. A very competitive National League West division, too. Yeah. Uh, too competitive. Arizona, Colorado. Dan, you look at uh, Milwaukee leads the Central with 50 wins. You got 52 wins by Washington. But then you have 52 by the third place Colorado Rockies. Dodgers have 61 wins, Arizona 53, and Colorado 52. So, I mean, it looks like right now the wild card could come, the two would both come out of the West. There's a 1 2 to Garrett Cole off the glove of Leak. Barehanded by Jerko and offline. Terrific play by Jerko just to make that close. It's a base hit for Garrett Cole who came in hitting 133. Well, it really was a sensational play and effort. Ball bounced back up the middle. Remember, Leak is a very good fielder in his own right, but the deflection there, barehanded, throws on the run, off balance, good recognition by Jerko to even get it close, and then Carpenter does the right thing. Ball's wide, come off the bag. Don't try and stretch and end up putting the runner at second. Top of the lineup and Adam Frazier, and he looks at a strike. Houston in the American League West, they are 60 and 29. Last team to win 60 of their first 90 and miss the playoffs. You have to go back to 1993. That was the San Francisco Giants. Again off the glove of Leak. Little shovel pass to Carpenter for the out. Good play by Colton Wong. Set up away right off the end of the bat. Comes over here and deflects it. That's just not. Uh, like Mike Leak, very sure handed fielder, but here Colton Wong saves him. And it puts Garrett Cole in scoring position at second base. May not be the worst thing. Get him out there on the base paths, run around a little bit, as long as he doesn't score. Harrison struck out back in the first inning. It's a line drive out to center. Fowler. Makes the catch. Cole stays put at second base. Full day of baseball tomorrow on Fox Sports Midwest, FS1 and Fox. Cardinals continue their series with the Pirates. We'll come your way at 5.30 St. Louis time. FS1 as Yankees, Red Sox, then Rangers, Royals. All the games are streaming on Fox Sports Go. Yankees get bad news. Trailing the Red Sox by three and a half, but Michael Pineda Looks like he is scheduled now for Tommy John surgery, and that's a huge loss. I'm looking for a second opinion. And a base hit out to left field. Charging hard, Tommy Pham. Cole is held up at third. A base hit by McCutcheon. Runners at the corners. Breaking ball, and this time it does stays up a little bit in the middle of the plate instead of down and, and away. So you get the ground ball that you were looking for, but it just bounces it through on the left side. And we make Cole run some more. Majority of the power for Josh Bell has been from this side of the plate. 11 of his 16 home runs. And he takes a pitch up and in. Runners at first and third, two nothing Cardinals. Jed Jerko, a first inning home run. And a base hit. The Pirates get on the board as Cole will score. Racing to third goes McCutcheon. 
RBI number 45 for Josh Bell and that makes it a 2 1 St. Louis lead. Holding McCutcheon on costs the Cardinals. Holding on, so and then it's just beyond the dive of Carpenter at first base. If he's not there, he's playing back. He makes it easily. And there's your first to third. But that does. Remember the Cardinals had a shutout on Sunday so that snaps 13 straight scoreless innings by the Cardinal pitching staff dating back to the seventh inning of the game on Saturday against the Mets. Same scenario. Two men on and two outs for freeze again. Oh and two. Oh, we've seen some weak hacks. Well, it looks like his slider is pretty sharp yeah, here today. Very, very sharp and really fooling a lot of these hitters. Can't stop their swing. The freezes are expecting their first child. O2 takes it to right, but Piscotti is there to make the catch. Pirate Strand 2, they pick up a run on a two out RBI base hit by Josh Bell. 2 1 St. Louis. To Nationals with a lead of nine and a half games. Great starting pitching. A lineup that can hit with anybody. The question will be their bullpen. And do they go out and bring back a Mark Melanson? Do they look here to the Pirates? Do they try to find anybody out of the race that has someone that's available in the back end of their bullpen? Because the bullpen ERA is near six. It's cost them a bunch of games. I mean, they easily could be up by 13, 15 games in the National League East. Now, Felipe Ribeiro came from the Nationals in the Melanson deal, right? That's right. Boy, they wish they had him back. He's outstanding. <laughs> His numbers are they're desirable, to say the least. I was wondering how he did not make the All Star team. I mean, he is dominant. I, I think the only thing you could say there is. Uh, Maybe felt like he wasn't here long enough. But. Three and two. He's got 44 appearances with a 0 0.76 ERA and just six saves. So I think that's it. See Fowler. He's trying not to laugh, but 
the guy behind him in the crowd is making him laugh a little bit. See, he's <laughs> biting his tongue a little bit, doesn't want to laugh. <laughs> that his friend in the bus commercial. <laughs> Guy got hit in the head by too many baseballs. Good point. Here's Dexter Fowler to lead it off. But you know, that is some of the things that you can have fun with. You know, there are fans that, you know, as long as they don't go overboard with certain names and certain things of that way, you can have fun with them. But I, I do have to ask, what would compel you to come to the ballpark dressed like that? I've got an answer for you, but I don't think I better give it to you. <laughs> Here's a 1 1. Two balls and one strike. Dexter Fowler fly to deep right field. And he's 0 for 1. Looks like he wears the tools of ignorance very well. Ouch. Two and two. Dexter went back to Las Vegas, his hometown, during the All Star break. There's Adam Olson, the head trainer for the Cardinals. Mike Matheny was at Table Rock Lake, his family. During the break, the Cardinals did something they rarely do, which is take a morning flight, charter flight out of St. Louis, day of game, give the players an extra day or at least night at home or the various stops along the All Star break. You know, Whitey Herzog used to do that all the time. And, you know, being in the central part of the country, one of your longest flights are to the the West Coast leave at 9 o'clock in the morning, get there at 1130. Of course, some of these guys get antsy if they're not at the ballpark at 1130. But it was nice to have that extra night at home. We were very appreciative for Yes, we were. 3 2 is fought off into shallow center, and McCutcheon makes the catch. Dollar is over 2. Fowler's former team, the Cubs, are at Baltimore tonight. Mike Montgomery against Kevin Gossman. The starters' ERA for the Chicago Cubs is 16th in Major League Baseball. Last year at this time, it was number one. They'll get Kyle Hendricks back very soon, and they've acquired Jose Quintana. He'll make his Cubs debut, the lefty, on Sunday. That was just the 15th trade all time between the Cubs and the White Sox. Last happening in 2006, Neil Kotz and David Ardsma, they swapped relievers. Little squibber and some English on it. Bell stays with it. To Cole covering the bag. So if, if Quintana pitches on Sunday, you should be in line to start against the Cardinals on Friday. And the Cubs gave up four players, including two top prospects. Right. And they now have no prospects listed in the top 100 of baseball. The only other team that can lay claim to that, the Kansas City Royals. But that could change quickly at the trade deadline with all the potential trades looming. Potential for Kansas City. The Phillies are at Milwaukee tonight. Aaron Nola and Jimmy Nelson. Kansas City is one game over 500 and three games back. The Brewers have won nine of 11. They come back from the All Star break with 50 wins. Just the fourth time they've done that in franchise history. The other three times they did that, only once they made the playoffs. They uh, follow St. Louis here in Pittsburgh for a four game set. Jed Hoyer is the uh, general manager in Chicago. Theo Epstein, the president of baseball operations. There's a report tonight that they are looking at trying to acquire Sonny Gray from Oakland. 
So you get Quintana who has many years left on his contract and uh, very affordable for a frontline starter. Same could be said potentially of Sonny Gray. The 2-2. The 2 2 pitch to the Cardinals eight time all star Yadier Molina. Get out of play. I mentioned that Reggie Smith the last Cardinal to hit a home run in the all star game that was in 1974. He came from Boston. For Rick Wise and Bernie Carbo. And here it is. And he could hit him a long way. Reggie Smith, the last Cardinal to do it prior to Molina. That's right here in, in uh, Pittsburgh, right? Three what, Rivers. Looks like three Rivers. 2-2. Two, two. Reggie Smith, one of the only Cardinals that can lay claim to walking five times in a game as you get a look at the Academy Sports and Outdoor Leaderboard. And I was looking at one of the names on the list. Colby Rasmus did that. Colby by the way is out of baseball he uh, he's with Tampa Bay and they put him on the restricted list and he said for personal issues the club has asked that they not dive into him but he said he's stepping away from the game for at least this year and if not more restricted list you cannot join any other organization you're still property. 3 2 is a base hit off the bat of Molina. But they don't have to pay him. Snaps a string of nine straight set down by Garrett Cole. T Mobile, unlimited baseball break. Jose Quintana, record four and eight in 18 starts. They feel by looking at him with some video, there's some mechanical flaws that they detected. They're going to try to get him straight. And as we talked about, the National League West, Dodgers, Diamondbacks, and Rockies all have played very well in the first half. Here's Piscotti who fly to center. This is also the anniversary of the 1970 All Star game in which Pete Rose barreled over Ray Fossey to score the winning run. Fossey had 16 home runs prior to the break. Two after that was never quite the same. No. Long time broadcaster now with the A's. Doesn't like to talk about it either. The home plate collision, something you just don't see a lot of anymore. I remember. Yadier Molina's very first game was right here in, in Pittsburgh, where he won a lot of uh, respect from his teammates when he got run over and held on tight to the ball and didn't phase him a bit. But it's happened to Yadi twice in this ballpark. The first, if memory serves correct, was Ty Wigginton, who barreled him over, and then the second was Josh Harrison, and the yeah. the, the first time. Was a little bit worse, I thought, than the Harrison play. It's easy for me to say. But the second time is when they had the concussion list. And here it is, 2004. Let's see if it's Wigington. It's Larry Walker. A vicious collision at the plate. Yep, Ty Wigington. As Piscotti drops to a knee and strikes out.
receive a Cardinals pocket t-shirt featuring Fred Bird courtesy of the Post House Company. So don't miss out. Get your tickets to the July 30th game against the Diamondbacks at Cardinals.com slash promotions. The Cardinals will not be home a lot of the 74 games that remain 43 are on the road so that's 58 percent of their schedule on the road the highest percentage of road games remaining for any team across the major leagues the Cardinals are 17 and 21 away from Bush Stadium this year's time is called. I see Polanco the more out to right it's hooking and it is a foul ball that just reinforces my thinking of Dave Parker 6 5 230 and he's keeping every year it seems like puts on a little more weight but he'll put on another 25 30 pounds and he'll be Dave Parker and Dave Parker when he showed up was the fastest as fast as anybody in the league and had that frame of 6'5 and about 260. He, he's almost set it like a record for infield hits that year. There's a look at Carlos Martinez and the Pirates want to take a look and see if this is indeed a home run. Every time I see Polanco I think Oscar Tavares and Carlos Martinez during the All Star break. Uh, really a neat story with his Tsunami Waves Foundation arrived at about 2 a.m. on Wednesday morning in the Dominican Republic and he said he stayed up talking to his family all night finally went to bed at 6 o'clock got about four hours sleep we'll see if this ball truly is foul maybe not and his foundation by the way distributed 500 backpacks filled with school supplies and the kids Martinez Jersey they went to various neighborhoods in the Dominican and also uh, went to the hometown of Oscar Tavares to hand out those backpacks and those jerseys so Carlos doing some really neat things. Yeah I, I think we just have to commend him for what he's doing with that foundation you know and he's doing it hands on isn't it? Sure is. Foul ball. Some of the fans began to boo, if not all of them. <laughs> and Polanco sends one into deep center. Fowler back. This one is off the wall. And Polanco winds up at second base. And with his speed, why isn't he at third? Yeah, it's, uh, he was. He was saying it was a home run ball all the way. Tommy Pham could have, should have been over towards center field to help out. But Fowler gives it a great effort. Goes off there and deflected towards left center. But look, he's in his home run trot, and that's why he only gets a double out of it. That's that's not right. He should be at third base. Never assume. Well, we're glad he's not. Francisco Cervelli lined out to short first time up. A 2 1 ball game here in the bottom of the fourth. These two teams have played, you know, as you said, the Cardinals are 4 and 2 against them, but all of them have been very low scoring games, so a base running mistake like that could be costly. Round ball that's hit to the left of the young and advancing to third Polanco. Well you have a decision to make here with the eighth place hitter and then Garrett Cole on deck. Ball like that probably scores right. Yeah. Pull the infield in. 
runners in scoring position. Jody Mercer, 319 average. He's one of those kind of guys that he'll come up with key hits. Maybe not a high average, but deadly hits. He comes in with a 347 on base percentage. So finding a way as an eighth place hitter to get on base. Pirates about to hit the Cardinals 5 3. They trail 2 1. We'll see if they continues to fall behind in the count whether they put him on and try and get the, the ground ball double play. It's not to make excuses but you may remember Polanco did miss time with a hamstring issue that was in April could not run very well out of the batter's box. But even then, if he's just jogging, probably should be at third base. Yeah, I mean, that's valid. But if he just ran normal speed from the batter's box, he would have been at third. So they pitch around Jordy Mercer, and it brings in Garrett Cole. They have done this before, in which the Cardinals try to catch a runner napping at third base. Jed Jerko thinks that they got him. Takes an eye. Oh my goodness. Sure look like it. Him. We couldn't really tell. Well, the third base umpire looks like he's confused. They want to they want to challenge it. Well that view it's tough because you can't Couldn't tell if he's foot. yeah if the foot is on the bag. Saw it kind of coming down. Polanco's reaction was one of uh oh I just may have gotten caught. And if he did it's another incredible play. By Yadier Molina and Jed Jerko. They did this earlier this season, and Lance Lynn was on the mound. He was on fumes. Bases would have been loaded for the Cincinnati Reds, and they caught the runner at third base. Well, I think too, if you if you saw the way Blanco was walking back, totally, you know, not looking at anything. There you see it right there. Well what they can do in New York and this is why it's important to understand this they can take that view even though it may not be the best but they can blow up that angle and get a better view at third base on a replay in New York which is something that's very important with plays like this from my vantage point watching it right there he's out yes and time had not been called. Crew chief and the third base umpire is Chad Whitson. I don't know if I've ever heard his name. They just showed the view on the video board and that's where you see the reaction of Yadier Molina shaking his head in the affirmative that he's out. If he did do this it's another <laughs> heads up incredible play by Yadier Molina. See there nonchalantly Urko walks in tags him. Like you said we really couldn't tell when that word that foot was going down but. From this angle you don't see the foot but you kind of see that it it goes down after the tag. It's a huge play in this game potentially. Fans wanted a home run call didn't get it and they no. get the out call. Unbelievable again by Yadier Molina. Third pickoff this year by Molina. So it's ball four. Blanco's just walking back there. He fires down to Jerko and he tags him out. <laughs> you get a better angle here. He's Tag. out. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what they called. <laughs> Incredible play by Molina, and now there's two outs. Second walk. For leak tonight. That's a rarity. 
And a ground ball that's hit to third. Jerko is there and lobs it to first, and Garrett Cole isn't even running to first. The fans will give you their reaction. A chorus of boos and for his teammates as they return defensively to play. Yadier Molina for the second time this year, a key spot in the game. We're going to start though with this. Gregory Polanco not running out of the box. It's a double. Not running well. He winds up at third base eventually in a ground out. Molina picks him off after the walk to the shortstop. Jordy Mercer and then Garrett Cole not running on a throw then that was wide and offline and booed mightily there by the folks in Pittsburgh. Mm -mm -mm. Always had a battle here. Everybody says it's a football town and then when you do things like that, you can't expect the fans to want to come out and pay their hard earned money to, to watch that. It's Garrett Cole's game, so if he wants to not hustle. I mean, how do you how do you ask your teammates to hustle? All you have to do four times a game, Danny, is just run down the line. Here's Colton Wong. Popped out to third, first time up. Well, it just doesn't look good. No. And there's no defense. And I mean, it was a hamstring in April. We're in July. He's playing every day. One ball and one strike on Colton Wong. The 2 1 pitch out in front of the plate. Cervelli makes the play. It brings in Paul DeYoung. DeYoung with 19 extra base hits in his first 36 games, and he is an exclusive company in Cardinals history. Fourth best in Cardinals history to do that. Among rookies. Cardinal rookies this year, the most home runs, DeYoung with nine. In Cardinals history, it was Pujols, Mize, and Diaz that had this many extra base hits in this amount of games. Right. 
saves held his own ground first time up here. And a young cranks one out to deep right going back Polanco near the wall and he's got it. Nice play by Gregory Polanco. You go back on that that wall there the Kilmeny wall 21 feet high honoring their the great Hall of Famer. Some people would get away from it try and play the carom but he's six five. Plays that very well out there, jumps up and makes the makes the play. You got a 5'10, even probably a six foot outfielder, and they can't make that play. Now Mike Leak. Garrett Cole grew up a Yankee fan, even though he was living in California. Dad was from the East Coast. Exposed to Yankee games. 2001 a photo that ran Newark Star Ledger an 11 year old Garrett Cole holding a sign before a World Series game that said Yankee fan today tomorrow forever. So the Yankees when they drafted him in the first round they thought well this is our guy we're going to get him did not sign and said he was not ready for Major League Baseball Frazier near the line racing over and makes the catch. So the Cardinals go in order. We're midway through five. The top of the lineup coming up for the Buckos. Today, the ballpark presented by Thriving Financial is Sunday, July 30th. The featured postgame speaker, Lance Berkman, the former Cardinals All Star and World Champion of 2011. For tickets, visit cardinals.com slash Christian Day. Got a big shout out, big Cardinal fan, not doing well at Barnes Jewish Hospital, military vet, but uh, David Hemp, I want to wish you a speedy recovery and get out and watch the Cardinals play. At Bush Stadium when you can. Here's Adam Frazier who is one for two. He played the outfield, but really a middle infielder, isn't he? Second baseman, and there's a base hit into right. Mentioned earlier that Molina has picked off three. All three have been at third base. You think about pickoffs, a lot of times at first base with Molina, especially with Pools when he was here. Well, I think yeah, they, they've got the word got around don't take a, a big lead at first base. And now it's going to start getting around don't take it at first, second, or third. He sees things that uh, nobody else sees in a baseball time. I would agree.
Here's Josh Harrison. And a double play ball. Glove by DeYoung. Flip to Wong. And a 6 4 3 double play. Well, part of having a successful double play is the ball has to be hit hard, and that was. The State Farm double play. DeYoung, Wong to Carpenter. Wong had so much time, just don't uh, throw it away. Harrison hit that ball right on the nose. And it brings in McCutcheon. Single to left back in the third and also a struck out. I'm going to pass along our thoughts and prayers of the family of Jan Marty. He's 97, recently passed away, huge Cardinal fan. And her family is watching tonight. They never miss a game. And our thoughts and prayers with the Marting family. Two balls and one strike. Three and two the count. Hanger right there, but couldn't do anything with it. That leak's already walked two. That's more than what he walks normally in a nine inning fair. Here's a 3 2 pitch. Ooh. McCutcheon thought he may have been struck out. Molina did too. The third walk issued by Mike Lee. Real tight zone, isn't it? Like three of those pitches could have been called strikes. And with two outs, the batter will be Josh Bell. He had a two out base hit RBI to right to score Garrett Cole back in the third. We have had some wild games here <laughs> at this ballpark. Last year it was the pinch hit home run late by Matt Carpenter. It set the all time pinch hit home run record by a team. Huge time in the game, too, is ninth inning down to their final strike. Dave Duncan, Gerald Perry getting into a fist fight before a game. Remember that one? Pujols had some remarkable nights here. Always hit well at PNC. It seemed like when uh, this ballpark was early in its stages, Pujols had more home runs than most of their own players. I think about the young fan that was hurt near Albert Pujols one night. Albert took care of that fan afterwards. It was a great story. That pitch taken a little bit high. Here's a 1 1. I remember Tony La Russa, I think, was being interviewed by Jim Hayes when the, uh, the fight was taking place behind him with Dave Duncan. And he and Lloyd McClendon would get into yeah. it over the years, too. Just don't have those fun things anymore with no collisions at the plate. Right up your alley. Here's a one-two pitch. 
Molina cannot hold on as Bell just got a piece of it. Pirates are high on this young man. They think he's going to be a star. The short lead at first by McCutcheon. Only six stolen bases this year. Talk about Bell, Dan. You know, the switch hitter. Right hand is his power side, even though he has only five home runs right handed, 11 left handed. But he's got, you know, almost a. Uh, uh, just a third of the at bats right handed versus left. Two balls and two strikes. In and walk number four, back to back walks by Leak. Well, fans, if you can't catch the games on television, you can stream them live on your mobile device with Fox Sports Go. Download the app, take Fox Sports Midwest and Cardinals baseball with you wherever you go. Four walks in the game, two to Josh Bell. And here's David Freeze. It's an out of play. David has popped out and also lined out over two. As a Cardinal, Leak equaled his uh, highest walks. Did that uh, last year against Cincinnati with four. And back in 2010, he walked seven for a career high. Seems like that after the break, you know, the starters that first game or so are kind of the ones that struggle a little bit with their command. Here's a 1 1 pitch to David Freeze. This is a season high in walks for Leak tonight. Previous high was three. He's at four tonight. Did pitch around Jordy Mercer back in the fourth. One and two the count here on David Freeze. Four for 22 thus far against the Cardinals with five standing O's at Bush Stadium. <laughs> two and two. The dirt and kept in front. Runners off with this pitch with a guy that has had pretty good numbers here against Mike Leake. Big pitch in this game. A real big pitch. He's got two starters in this game, Cole and Leak, that usually throw strikes and work quickly. And that has not been the case. It's also a very small strike zone tonight, Jerry Lee. He's walked the bases loaded. <laughs> De 
Eric Lilliquist out to visit with Mike Lee. Base is loaded and the batter is Gregory Polanco. We saw a pickoff of Polanco earlier in the game this evening. And the pickoffs, we mentioned three of them this season, all have been at third base for Yadier Molina. Two have come at crucial times. This is with the bases loaded. And Eugenio Suarez thrown out at third by Yadier Molina. You thought, well, he could possibly do it again. He did. This time with Polanco at third. The tag there by Jerko. Review, he's out. And a huge play in this game. Double play earlier this inning was a big play also. And a base hit, three walks, and haven't touched home plate. Polanco double off the wall in left center. Then was picked off at third. First pitch taken high. Don't let him redeem himself. He does have one grand slam, a 262 hitter with the bases loaded. The five walks, a career high for Mike Leake as a Cardinal. We got a power hitter falling behind the count, making him even more dangerous. The 2 0 pitch. Matt Bowman throwing and throwing in a hurry in the Cardinals pen. Pitch count is only at 80 for Mike Lee. We're only in the fifth. I see Bowman. The 2 1 pitch. A little bit high. Lee thought that may have been a strike. Still don't want to get the ball up there. The ball's going to get a definite ball in the air, and with his power, it could go. Base is loaded, and the 3 1 pitch. Polanco, base hit in the right. One run is in. The hold up bell at third. This game is tied at two. Go to a hero, huh? Polanco. Just Polanco's 25th RBI. He's just batting barely over 200 with runners in scoring position this this year. But desirable count, and he made him pay. Francisco Cervelli. 0 for 2, lined out to short, grounded out to short. Bases loaded, two outs in a 2 2 game. And strike one. Leak has walked five. He has struck out two, both coming in the first inning, back to back of Harrison and McCutcheon. The 0 1 pitch. 0 and 2. Leaks allowed seven hits and five walks. Lucky just to be tied. Remember, Cervelli had the grand slam on Sunday against Chicago. That was his second plate appearance in that first inning. He came into this ballgame swinging a hot bat. He was seven for his last nine. The 0 2 struck him out. And Cervelli strikes out with the bases loaded. Polanco has tied it up. It's 2 2 after five.
And a look at the road trip with three here in Pittsburgh, four against the Mets, then three next weekend at Wrigley Field in Chicago. All these teams are under the 500 mark. If you look at winning percentage wise, the Cardinals have the seventh easiest schedule in baseball. The problem is, majority of these games are on the road. <laughs> well, in the past, we've been a very good road team. Remember last year, we, it was the first year in Mike McKean's tenure with the Cardinals that they had a sub 500 record at home, made a good record on the road. So Garrett Cole pitching now into the sixth inning. Mentioned earlier, he grew up in California, the Long Beach area. And he said his biggest thrill so far in pro baseball has been meeting Vin Scully. Grew up listening to Vin, had the chance in his final season last year for Vin to go up in the booth and visit with him. And he told him, My contribution to the world is that I helped cure insomnia. People go to sleep listening to me. The great Vin Scully. We had the chance to say hello and visit with Vin year in and year out. Yeah. Always gracious. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Vin would leave his door open and he'd show up at the ballpark around 3 o'clock. The booth would be open until roughly, I'd say, 4 30, 4 45. He'd grab a bite to eat in a private room, and then once he went in to do his job, that door stayed closed. A foul ball there for Carpenter, and the minute the game ended, headset was down, car waiting for Van, and he was gone. Sinker running down off the front shin. Left handers actually have been pretty good against Garrett Cole this season. 291 average, 13 of the 20 home runs he's given up from the left side of the plate. Carpenter 0 for 2. He's fly to center and also struck out. The 2 2 inside corner and struck him out. Third strikeout for Garrett Cole. He uh, in the driver's seat while we have a moment. In El Central, the highest second half winning percentage since the 2012 season. Cardinals have been a team that, under Mike Matheny, finishes a year very well. There's Tommy Pham. Base hit to right, run scored on the home run by Jerko, also grounded out to short. Interesting that Matt Bowman continues to throw in the bullpen. Makes you think he's coming in. Makes you think that. And Pham to right again. Second hit. Leak had 85 pitches. He had the three consecutive walks. And a Cardinal high for him, five. So his night may be through. And it brings in Dexter Fowler, who is 0 for 2. And with that base hit, they start to scurry and stretch. Maybe start to throw in the Pirates pen. We're in the top of the six, two to our score. This truly is one of the great settings for baseball. BNC Park opened up in 2001. It was built actually, if you're familiar with this area, adjacent to Three Rivers Stadium. 
prior to Three Rivers, there was Forbes Field from 1909 until 1970. Three Rivers from 1970 up until 2001. It's not a baseball stadium, it's a park. It's got that feel. Just under 39,000 it can seat. So we sit on the north shore of Pittsburgh along the Allegheny River. And Forbes Field was so big that they would take the batting cage and just park it in the outfield. They turn the mouth of it up against the wall in center field and just leave it there and play. Had a kind of a short porch to right, had a screen there. Left was the wall that kind of famous from Mazeroski getting the home run over it. But if you were a starting pitcher or a pitcher, and say you got into a little beanball incident with the the Pirates, when you left the ballpark or left the field, you had to go through their dugout and go through what we called the dungeon to get to the clubhouses. And there was many a time where a series of pirates would be waiting for an opposing pitcher at the other end of the tunnel. Mike Matheny there telling Mike Leak he's out of the game and Leak not happy. Two balls and two strikes. Fowler takes a ball low. Let's see if the Cardinals want to do some running here with Tommy Pham. Daniel Hudson, the right handed pitcher, getting loose in the pen for Pittsburgh. There goes Pham, and it's a foul ball. Saw where Cole held on the ball a long time. It's designed to take the spring out of the legs of a base stealer. He won't get the jump he desires or get him to come back to the bag because he's uncomfortable just standing there. It's also it's uncomfortable for a pitcher to just hold the ball also. Bam at first base, two hits tonight. 3 2 pitch. There he goes. And it is a strikeout of Dexter Fowler on the inside corner. And a stolen base for Tommy Pham, number 12. If they would have held on to it, it might have been a double play. But Mercer couldn't hold on to the ball, so the 12th steal. They see really kind of the swing. And couldn't hold on to the ball or he would have been out. So 12 steal for Tommy Pham. It brings in Jed Jerko. At Forbes Field, the right field power alley was 436 feet. How many home runs would Willie Stargell have had if he played all his games at Three Rivers? At 475. So. Nissan drive of the game. Speaking of home runs, Jed Jerko with a two run shot. Let's see, it was uh, 400 feet and then a, another 400 feet tossed. You got it. Into the Allegheny. Is that the right river? Three to pick from, right? Well, you've got the Monongahela, the Allegheny, and the Ohio. Three rivers. And the Monongahela, Allegheny meet in Pittsburgh to form the Ohio. And that's the Allegheny beyond the wall and right. Hence, three rivers. Two to our score, one ball, one strike on Jed Jerko. At one point, Willie Stargell had the longest registered home runs in half of the stadiums in the National League. Think about that. Yeah, they used to mark them. Unbelievable. One, it seemed like there was obviously three rivers. I think there was one in the dome, the Astrodome. 
the bet he hit a bomb there. Two and two. His bat was 35 inches, 34 ounces, which in today's day and age would be considered a tree trunk. Guys just don't use a bat that big. You know, and then really that that surprises me. I thought it would be even bigger, bigger than, that, than that. Yeah. Because there were guys like Dick Allen who would use sometimes up to 40 ounces. Great Willie Stargell. He had 30 or more home runs four times after moving to Three Rivers. He averaged 24 home runs a year at Forbes. So he would have been over 500. More than likely. That's hit to short. Jordy Mercer to his left. And the Cardinals strand Tommy Pham. We're midway through six. Cardinals go to their bullpen. And it's a tie ball game, 2 2. The Cardinals Hall of Fame the induction ceremony is coming up join the Cardinals Edward Jones congratulating Mark McGuire Tim McCarver and Pepper Martin at the 2017 Hall of Fame induction ceremony in Fox Sports Midwest live at Ballpark Village. It's August 26th at 2 learn more at Cardinals.com slash H O F. It's free and open to the public. Matt Bowman takes over for the Cardinals. Mike Leake, five innings, two runs, seven hits. Look at his Hyundai pitch arsenal. Struck out three, walked five. Bowman, a very solid first half. And tied for third in the National League and holds with 16. And appearances. This is number 44. Jordy Mercer, eighth place hitter, then the pitcher's spot. And Mercer takes a ball low and outside. It's grounded out to third and also walked. And the one two. Out of play. We had a shot earlier of the first base coach of the Pirates, that is Camara Barty. He played under Clint Hurdle when he was in Colorado. 
over third. Joey Cora. Here's a one two. And a soft liner over Wong and into right field. And I bring that up because you brought up a good question. Nick Leva. Yeah, I was going to say. I'm so used to seeing Nick Leva on his staff and not in the media guide. Coaches have to work now. And Nick getting up there a little bit. Go ahead. A little bit of a health scare a couple years ago, so maybe I'll talk to Quinn about that and see if he's okay. Jose Osuna will be the pinch hitter. So Garrett Cole's night is through. We're in the bottom of the six, two to our score. Very late swing for strike one. Barty played under Gene Roof in the Tigers system and the connection to the Cardinals is that Gene will be at the fantasy camp. There's another one coming up at Memphis. Yeah. And uh, you can find out more on the Cardinals website Look for the information on the fantasy camp as they just wrapped up what they said was a spectacular camp in Cooperstown. Base hit on the 0-2 pitch. When I talked to Kyle McClellan. He was just raving about the experience at Cooperstown and having an opportunity to play on that field there. The hotel was just phenomenal. They're getting ready for the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies coming up here in late July. But if you're in that Memphis area or want to make the trip from around the Midwest, look at that Cardinals fantasy camp coming up in Memphis. The top of the lineup, and here's Adam Frazier. Couple of hits, he's two for three. A single to center, also a base hit to right. And Bowman, I'm sure, is kicking himself over that 0 2 pitch. Frazier bunting and pushed it foul. And fantasy camp is August 14th through the 17th. Looks like a guy that probably could bunt for a base hit, but really struggles trying to do it in a sacrifice situation. And stabbing at it. And the 0 1 pitch again, he squares to bunt, stabbed at it again, strike two. Get around, slide your hand up on the barrel, but you see he pulls it back. Can't do that. You gotta have to flex your knees so you can go up and down with the pitch. But just catch the ball with the bat. Soft hands, letting it deaden. Now is he continued bunt or will he get a chance to swing away? It's another 0-2 pitch. Swinging away. Jerko will step on the bat, goes to second, and he got him. Gets the lead man, and what a terrific play again by Jerko. How good has he been defensively this year for the Cardinals? Time was called, and they're going to make Frazier go back to the bag at first as he went after second base. Look at that, just with momentum carrying right back to the bag. He already had this plan in his head that he was going to go to second. Wong can act like a first baseman out there, get the stretch. Glenn Hurdle wants an explanation from the umpire and crew is Frazier trying to make something out of nothing a heads up play and he may get tossed. Come on Clint. Come on. Yeah. Now we got it out. This is what you wanted. I 
miss it. <laughs> now, I do too. <laughs> So Clint Hurdle ejected Frazier, dejected by not getting the bunt down and then hitting into a double play. But again, Jed Jerko has been on the end of a couple of really good defensive plays. Yeah, momentum carry right to the bag at third, stepped on it, and in, in his mind, there was going to get the force out at second. Colt Wong was right there to receive it, and Holman, out of a much tougher jam, still got. Uh, Worry about the one runner on in a tie ball game. Third time he's been ejected this year, 54th ejection of his career. You know, it's not easy to get ejected anymore because <laughs> no, of replay. You're right, you're right. That's why I say, you know, these these umpires I don't expect to have any arguments anymore. You gotta really earn it. Well, apparently he did. Harrison dropping down a bunt, and that's a foul ball. So well, two outs and a runner at first. Yeah, let's see what happened after Frazier. He hits the ball, you get the double play, you see him come down the line, see if you can see if anybody calls time. Carpenter, Carpenter, Carpenter called time, second base umpire granted it. So the third base umpire can say his time's being called. But clearly, Clinton didn't see that. Tyler Lyons is up and throwing in the Cardinals pen. And the 0 1. Once again, we know Colton Wong has been him off the disabled list, but also Kevin Segrist, another very accomplished left hander in that bullpen. Mike Matheny was asked about that before the game how he's going to use those three lefties. Yeah, and, and I think we, you know Cecil right now is going to be your your late inning guy, but Kevin Segrist is going to be right there once he kind of established himself. He feels like he's solved some of his problems, and because of the injury to his back, he altered his mechanics, throwing even more exaggerated across his body, and feels like you know one that will uh, give him some of the velocity back, but. Even if he doesn't get that velocity, he's still got good enough stuff. Just be ahead in the count. And the one two pitch to Josh Harrison. The way Mike put it, he said Cecil for sure has established himself late innings. He's pitching well. Lions, he said we could use in two different roles. One is a lefty specialist or multiple innings. And for Segrist, we got to find out where he's at. Yeah, and I think if you look at it right now, you know, Cecil's going to be your seven, eight, the ninth thing when he's going to appear. You got right now Tyler Lyons that Bowman doesn't get out of this jam, and Tyler can take you a couple more innings until you get to the late inning relievers. And the fact that I think you know Segrist only threw two innings, I believe. He was on the rehab. So two and two the count. And the next to Josh Harrison. Runner goes and a high fly ball. Into center, Dexter Fowler camped under it and makes the catch. So Bowman gets out of a jam. The second double play turned by the Cardinals tonight. And then the ejection. Quickly a plant hurdle.
hit a home run. The Gateway Honda dealers donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Missouri. Yadier Molina leads it off, and then Stephen Biscotti and Cole Belong. Nelson Cruz to Yadi during the All-Star game. Joe West had no idea what was going on. He wanted a, a picture with an umpire that's called over 5,000 games, and he got it in the All-Star game thanks to Yadi. Fun moment. Joe didn't know what to make of it. <laughs> First time in 5,000 plus games. You got Ryan it, boy. Tony Watson, our Chevy call the bullpen. Former closer. Look how lefties have hit 321 against him. Righties are just 300, but all seven home runs. He lost the closer job, but he's been scored upon just once in his last 11 appearances. A 3.86 ERA. Gave up the closer's role to Rivero. And it's Yadier Molina. You know, he was just such an outstanding setup man. Grilly, Melanson, different guys were the closers, but he was lights out. But just didn't handle it. Molina, the fly ball into right, and the catch is made by Polanco as that ball carried on. And Yadi is one for three. Thing. He's six foot five. Ball started to take off on him, and I realized he better get back a little bit. May have lost it in the lights, as he indicated to Andrew McCutcheon, and now it's Biscotti. The change up for strike one. Steven is over two. Fly to center. And struck out back in the fourth. Garrett Cole went six innings tonight. Two runs. That was on the Jerko home run back in the first. Four hits, struck out four, no walks, and gave up that one home run. That's pulled foul. This guy just trying to find some consistency, isn't he? Really been an up and down year, and he could be a major factor for the Cardinals here in the second half. 238 average, but well under 200 on the last home stand. Still trying to find it. And the 0 2. Getting to that point in the season where you're asking players in a couple of weeks to really push through the grind of a major league season when you get into August. That would be the case here with Piscotti. It's a lot easier if you're playing for something. If you're 20 games back, boy, it's a chore to go to the ballpark. When you're in a pennant race, you can't wait to get to, to the ballpark. Be with your teammates. Go out there and find out what's going to happen that night. It's, it's going to be the story that you're going to tell all your grandkids when it's all said and done. One two pitch. Hit down the right field line and out of play. Watson is starting to figure it out. Last 11 appearances, only one run allowed in an ERA that's barely over one in those 11 appearances. So he's gotten much better here recently. And as Al mentioned, we've seen him be as tough as anybody in baseball. Brett Cecil getting loose in the Cardinals' pen. Ground ball that's hit to short. Jordy Mercer two away. You don't want to miss the biggest end of the summer party workplace wellness event of the year. It's the Biz Dash Thursday August 31st at Ballpark Village music a tailgate food and drinks at a 5k create your company team today by visiting stlbizdash.com and it's brought to you by Fox Sports Midwest. Round ball that's hit to second, gloved by Harrison in an underhand. Toss to Josh Bell. Cardinals go in order. Time to stretch here in game one.
taking a look around Major League Baseball. Now we'll focus on the Central Cardinals and Cubs, five and a half back, Pittsburgh seven, Reds are nine and a half back of Milwaukee. And the Brewers hit a bunch of home runs, and that might be the best acquisition. Travis Shaw, Eric Thames, and they've got pretty good starting pitching as well. Think about Travis Shaw. How good would he look for Boston right now? Oh, no doubt. <laughs> they gave him up for Tyler Thornburg in a trade that has not worked out for Boston, but it has been a terrific trade for the Milwaukee Brewers as Brett Cecil takes over. So Chevy called to the bullpen. Brett has a 14 and two thirds scoreless streak going. 14 appearances during that time, second longest active in major leagues. Had given up a run since. June 7th. He's got three, four, and five. McCutcheon, Bell, and Freeze. Milwaukee, an 8 2 lead in the bottom of the fourth against the Phillies. Same score, Chicago leading Baltimore, 8 2. That's in the top of five. And Washington, a 5 0 lead in the bottom of the seventh against Cincinnati. It's two balls and no strikes. The 2 0 pitch. McCutcheon tonight. A base hit to left. Walked and scored back in the fifth and struck out. Batting over 400 since late May. Swinging on that 2 1 pitch to DeYoung, and there's one away. Well, Saturday, July 29, 30,000 fans, 16 and older, will take home a unique throwback jersey. It's got Cardinals on the front, the pinstripes, a replica 1919 pinstripe Cardinals jersey coming up. After the game, fireworks brought to you by Fabic Cat. That's uh, tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions, and that's July 29th. Like that jersey. Here's Josh Bell. And Bell hits it out to deep left field. Fam is back and makes the catch on the track. Two away. Tommy Pham got a beat on it. Everything feel the transition of grass to warning track. Knows he's near the wall right there. A little hop catches it. This didn't sound like he got it off the bat. Red Cecil trying to make it another scoreless appearance. Two outs, nobody on for David Freeze. I think I speak on behalf of all Cardinal fans. I know on behalf of you. We are so happy that David. Is happy in his personal life, doing great things with the Pirates. They say he is the leader in their clubhouse. Really a pro's pro. Just a good guy. No doubt about it. Like I said, married now, expecting their first child, and couldn't be happier for him. Sometimes you need to change teams, you know, change environments. Goes the other way. And on the move is Scotty won't get there. One hops off the wall. David Freeze trotting into second base with a two out double. As he's done so often, taking that pitch to the opposite field. Stayed up a little bit, and he goes that way, like you said. Kind of in his wheelhouse to take it out to right center. So two out double. Here's Gregory Polanco. Get the feeling the Cardinals would be very careful with Polanco and then take their chances, even though Cervelli hits from the other side of the plate. There's two hits tonight. Barely missed a home run down the right field line. Doubled off the wall. 
And a two out RBI base hit to tie this game up. Little flare and it may drop. Jerko off his glove and it is a foul ball. It's a foul ball. Josh Harrison is out of the dugout and screaming at the third base umpire. It sure looked like the ball was foul to us. Get that impression? This is reviewable. Once it go past, past the third, right? has to go past the umpires and fair or foul down a line. On an outfield play can be reviewed. Boy, it's hard to tell. That angle it looks like it's a fair ball, but saw some of the other angles that look like the arm is in foul territory. Your guess, Danny. I'm leaving this one up to New York. <laughs> well, I think we both are, ultimately. Mike Matheny and the Cardinal dugout probably had a pretty good look at it. Quick decision. Foul ball. Could be a game changing call. See the umpire right there on the line. They got to have a better angle than that. And when Polanco, they question whether he hit a foul uh, home run was fair or foul it was foul and then he hit that double up the left center field wall if you're wondering because Jericho is in fair territory that has nothing to do with the call so if you're a fan and you're saying well wait a minute he's in fair territory and touch the ball doesn't matter exactly it's where they judge where the ball would land just to clarify that point and then with the rule of now review you can review it once it goes past essentially the infield dirt ideally it's past the umpire and then that's what is constituted as a outfield fair or foul call but because Jericho's in fair territory it does not matter. And a fly ball out to shallow left. This one will drop, and it is indeed foul. I'm sure the crowd will let us know. Hopefully, I explained that well enough. You did. Cardinals are being out hit 10 to 4 in this game. Buckos have already stranded nine to this point. You like how I really went out on a limb and said, I'm going to leave this one up to New York? I was really making a statement there. Left me hanging. <laughs> Juan Nicasio is throwing in the Pirates bullpen and the one two he got him struck him out that gives you an idea that Polanco is running a little bit better than we saw earlier and the fans see that as well they boo him as we head to the eighth.
The Pirates has been there, but they have not been able to push that third run across, and we're tied at two. So Juan Nicasio, 44th appearance in relief of Tony Watson. And this will be the third pitcher used by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Allowed two hits and his 25 at bats over his last eight appearances. Red Cecil, boy, what a horrible start to the season, but boy, we're seeing the reliable reliever now. Baseball is such a long year, isn't it? Yeah, but when you come to a new club, you know, and you get off to that kind of start, it, it's it's tough. It weighs on your mind sure and does. everything else. You're trying to impress your new teammates and also fans. And I think a lot of people have changed their opinion of Brett Cecil last month or so. He passes up Jamison Tyone, the starter tomorrow for the Pirates at 15 and a third. Now Cecil at 15 and two thirds scoreless baseball. Here's Paul DeYoung and a base hit. Luke Voigt will pinch hit. See, I think this is where they think Luke Voigt's going to get enough pinch hitting appearances or times when you got a tough left handed starter. Maybe Carpenter goes over to second, Wong sits, and Voigt, Voigt plays first base. So, in the back two, what is he, about 27? 26. 26, but he's not like a 22, 23 year old. And obviously, Seems very mature for that age and really ready to accept any role with this ball club. Luke Voigt, 316, the three home runs. He's driven in eight. Was talking to Luke before the game about his left leg. And it used to be a high leg kick that he changed in Springfield. Now he just drink, uh, drags it back and then goes forward. And he said the reason he changed that is that pitchers were starting to be able to get inside. In yep. And so he was getting jammed a lot with the high leg kick, then trying to put the leg back down and swing. And with all that activity on the front side, bat would drag. They could pitch him in. That's it. And so I asked him, I said, well, how do you develop this? He said, I have no idea. <laughs> but said, it's working. It's working. It just started to happen in the cage, and it stuck with me. Here's the 0 1 inside. Well, it's like a, a pitch like that, too. You're, you're, you exactly. can't get out of the way. Right. You, know, you, you can't move until you bring that foot back down. So if you've got it suspended in the air, you know, then an inside pitch like that, you're, you're going to get nailed. Now he showed me that stance. I mean, the knee would go basically to the belt buckle, if not higher, that leg kick. Out to center, but McCutcheon is there. First out. It only stands to reason that as he went up the ladder and pitchers had more command and better stuff, that they could exploit that. It'd be interesting to see how Mike Matheny keeps him fresh and in a lineup because he has provided a jolt. And now with Colt Wong back, Carpenter moves back to first base, and Voigt, at least for the time being, kind of the odd man out. But as you mentioned, he could be your pinch hitter. Well, like any pinch hitter, you're going to have to give them a, a start here or there to give them a fighting chance when they do uh, pinch hit. Juan Nicasio, team hitting just 080 against him in his last eight appearances. Ray Searge out. Casio, one of his latest projects. Really got him throwing the ball well. Carpenter is over three tonight. Couple of strikeouts and also flight out to center. Two to our score here in the top of the eighth. Cardinals pick up a run. You never know. Brett Cecil might pick up a win. Let's find out. Trevor Rosenthal throwing in the Cardinals pen.
Lefties hitting 212 against this right hander. Outside. Ooh, a strike. Way outside. Here's a one one. If you're wondering why the uh, the Pirates were able to challenge after the home run challenge earlier in the game that was an umpire's challenge not a team challenge so that next one was indeed the Pirates challenge and that's why they did that. All home run challenges are always an umpire challenge. Here's a 2 1 pitch. Fights it off. This may drop, and it does. Base hit. And stopping at second base, Paul DeYoung. The Cardinals have something going, and Tommy Pham has two hits tonight. Yellow would bring in the lumber with Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham, a base hit into right, scored a run on the home run by Jericho, and a base hit into right, and a stolen base number 12 back in inning number six. Right, he's playing right now. I'm your first choice to come up in this situation. Yeah. Swinging the bat very well. They shade him towards right field, in the outfield. Strike one. One thing Acasio can do, he can get a lot of strikeouts. Here's the 0 1. Now 0 and 2. Fastball at 98 in on the hands. Of Tommy Pham. How shallow Polanco is in right field. Yeah. She got McCutcheon playing over into right center. Here's the 0 2 to Tommy Pham. Been trying to bust him in. There's a good example of it. The Fox Tracks presented by Plaza Tire Service. Hit the spot. I go in there one more time and miss. Leave it out over the plate a little bit. Oh, two in the dirt. Time of year, you start to pay a little bit more attention to the out of town scoreboard. What's happening with Milwaukee and Chicago? Both were up big at last check. Milwaukee added another run there, 9 4 batting against Philadelphia at home. Inside again, 2 and 2. The 2 2 pitch. Pam out to right. Polanco makes the catch. So Tommy lines out to right field, and with two outs, it brings in Dexter Fowler. Polanco was right where he's supposed to be. Yeah.
Dexter Fowler is 0 for 3. Flight out to deep right. Fly to center and struck out. First pitch to the Cardinals center fielder. Inside for ball one. Dexter leads the club in game winning RBIs. Is that another one right here? Two for three against Nicasio. Garrett Cole went six. Watching a scoreless seventh and now Juan Nicasio. Runners at first and second and the 1 0 pitch. Two balls, no strikes. Jericho on deck. Rosenthal is loose and ready for the bottom of the eighth. The left seven, eight, and nine in the lineup coming up. Crowd tonight, 24,988. 24988. The 2 0. Fowler out to left, and he lines it right into the glove of Adam Frazier. Two line outs, and the threat is through. Rosenthal coming on when we come back. Bud Light, famous among friends. And by four, the official cars and trucks of the Cardinals. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors for all for less. That's the Rachel Carson Bridge. We have the Clemente Bridge and also the Andy Warhol Bridge. Clemente, who is a lot of a, a, a groundswell of support to name this ballpark Clemente Ballpark, but the naming rights were sold to PNC and that's why you have the naming rights of the bridge going to Roberto Clemente. Huh. Never knew that. Here's Trevor Rosenthal 38th appearance. Right he's only hitting 172 against Trevor. As Cervelli hits it out of play. Hugely popular sentiment to name the ballpark after Roberto Clemente, and you can understand why. Sure. Cervelli is one for six off of Rosenthal, and he's 0 for three tonight. Jordy Mercer at the on deck circle. 
And the 0 1 pitch. One ball and one strike. Lefty's hit 250 off of Rosenthal, and he struck out five in his last two innings of work. Here's a 1 1. Knee buckling breaking ball. Here's a 1 2. Change up to Cervelli and struck him out. This copyrighted kind of telecast presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Saw the Cardinal offense. Two run home run by Jerko. The Pirates in this ball game, they have stranded 10. They about hit the Cardinals 10 6. One ball and one strike. Mercer has been on base twice. He walked back in the fourth inning, base hit to right in the sixth inning, and grounded out to third. Here's a 1 1. Now 1 and 2. All of his pitches for strikes. Rosenthal Cade the side on Sunday. Change up. Softly hit. Rosenthal knocks it down. Former college shortstop makes the play. And that's out number two. The pinch hitter will be John Jaso. So Jaso to pinch hit for Juan Nicasio. He's done a good job in this role. Six for 18. That's a 333 average with a couple of home runs. One of them against us. That's right. His on base percentage as a pinch hitter is 500. Oh, for his last 11. And strike one. As you mentioned, 333, six for 18, seven RBIs as a pinch hitter. Two pinch hit home runs this year, five in his career. Rivero is getting loose in the pen for Pittsburgh. Two pitches back to back at 97 and it's 0 and 2. Might do him a favor by throwing something off speed right now. Wait, wait he's throwing fastballs by him. A change up froze him and struck him out. Two strikeouts in the inning for Trevor Rosenthal. And the Pirates go in order. We head to the ninth. Good work by Trevor out of the pen. We're tied up. It's 2 2.
This guy has been something else for the Pirates. Felipe Rivero, a left hander picked up from Washington. 44 games in a .76 ERA. .76. He'll get Jed Jerko, Yadier Molina, Steven Piscotti. You think about the matchups against Rivero where it might be beneficial for the Cardinals. Think about Jerko, fastball hitter. Rivero is throwing a ton of fastballs. Hard thrower. Jed with a two run shot back in the first inning. First pitch to him is taken for a ball at 98 miles an hour. He's given up two earned runs in his last 24 games. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Right handers hitting 162 against him. The lefties nearly unhittable. They're 5 for 59. That's an 085 average. The 2 0 pitch. Jerko gets that fastball and a fly ball into left center. And the catch is made by Adam Frazier for the first out. It was only an 11 pitch outing for Trevor Rosenthal. You may have extra innings coming up. It's not out of the realm of possibility to potentially extend Rosenthal. And as we say that, Sung Wan Oh is throwing in the pen. Fly ball out to right, two down. Well, Mike Matheny, and I don't agree with this, but likes his relievers all go one inning. That's going to catch up to you at some point. Every now and then you got to extend these guys, and otherwise you get into a situation where the same relievers are throwing three and four days in, in a row. Steven Piscotti. The ERA for Rivero is .76. That's lowest in all of Major League Baseball. The fastball at 100 from the lefty. Well, we talked about it earlier in the game that he was acquired by the Pirates, you know, in a trade with uh, the Nationals for Melanson. And it just seems like the Nationals every year can't find a closer, and they had one right here in the making, and very economical one. And a strikeout of Piscotti. 2 to our score as we move to the bottom of the ninth. He is the fourth reliever used by Mike Matheny in this game. The relievers have faced 11 batters Bowman, Cecil, Rosenthal, 
And in that time, they have struck out three, allowed three hits and no runs. So the bullpen has been very good for the Cardinals again tonight. The same could be said for the Pirates. Definitely. When you get down to your next innings when you're on the road, it, it's tough. So O has to send them down. Hopefully, one, two, three, be efficient with that. The lefties have really given O fits this year. They're batting 346 with six home runs against him. He's allowed seven home runs total. Yeah, five all last year and seven already this year. So the top of the lineup here for the Pirates, Adam Frazier. And there's strike one. We have seen O be a little sharper with his command, particularly the slider's been a little better, but Spotting the fastball is also key. 0 oh and 2. Frazier, a base hit to center and to right. And on Fox tracks, that's way outside. And because of that, Frazier yeah. has to protect. Exactly right, Dan. Went out there and got that one, fouled it off. They're consistent, you know, batters will adjust to it. And another O2 pitch by O. Base hit inside the third base line. Fan backhands quickly into second. DeYoung cuts it off. Save at second base. If DeYoung does not cut it off, they may have had a play a little bit closer there at second base if the throw is online. I, I kind of agree with you, Danny. It looked like it was right on line. Tommy Fan did everything he could. He got over to the line and he got rid of that. Without straightening up, he took, knew he had to get rid of it quickly and fires it in there. It looks like it's right on line, but just the extra relay from De Young to Wong, and they he gets his hand in on the the base ahead of Wong's tag. And watching it on the replay, I saw Wong jet a little bit to his left, so it might have been a little offline. Yeah, good point. So, regardless, it's a. Lead off double here in the bottom of the ninth. You can see the one hand go off with the tag, but the right hand stayed on the bag. Here's Josh Harrison. The base hit could win it here for the Pirates. And on the corners. One ball and one strike. Harrison is struck out, lined out to center, grounded into a double play, and fly to center. Six career walk off hits. Outfielders are awful deep. And the 1 1. The 2 1 pitch. Foul back. 2 and 2. So you get that good slider now down and away.
And it's in in the air out to shallow right. And a key first out for the Cardinals. Boy, that's a big out. Is Harrison Scotty Scott hurt himself? Scotty hurt himself with that throw in. I don't know if it was the quad or the groin. Come in here trying to get in position and make a th strong throw. And there you see. Mm. I said either the quad or the groin. It's right there on that right leg. Conductor. Cardinals do have Jose Martinez. Outfielder available on their bench. Like he's going to be coming out of this yep. game. The batter will be Andrew McCutcheon. Oh, is just playing catch right now with Molina to stay loose. Remember, he had very little time to warm up, so he's probably just woke me in that. But Cardinals do lose their best throwing arm from the outfield. And hopefully not to see him walking there and Martinez who was just recalled when Grichik was put on the disabled list with a bad back. A lot of the Cardinals had to race upstairs to get to the clubhouse the way it's situated here at this ballpark. I'm sure Jose was probably taking batting practice or swings off a tee back near the clubhouse so they had to go race and get him make sure that he was ready to go. So Piscotti, his night is through, and Jose Martinez takes over in right field. Remember, it's a team that's already missing Randall Gretchik on the 10 day uh, DL with a sore lower back. So he's playing catch with Carpenter and getting loose just in case. That's it, because I mean, my first ball might be coming right at him. You bet. Could be the ball game. Jennings started with a leadoff double inside the third base line by Adam Frazier. Fly out by Harrison. I mean, do you even want to pitch to McCutcheon? Well, there's our answer. No, you don't. Yeah, I was going to say, set up that double play. Swain, one of the hottest bats, and the potential of a double play or the force over at third. And so runners at first and second. The only problem is, is as we said, trouble with left-handed batters for O. He gets a, he gets the switch hitter from the left side. Good point. And here is Bell, who's been on base twice with a couple of walks and a two-out base hit to right, and scored a run back in the third. Chase to pitch up for strike one. Trying to be the hero. The Cardinals, if we get there, have seven, eight, and nine in the lineup coming up. Now the Cardinals are down to two position players on their bench. Winning run at second base. Good speed and Adam Frazier. Two strikes on Bell. Yachty set up so far outside, but right on the black. He's threading the needle there.
Hit the other way. Fan going back. It's at the wall, and it's good. This is field home run, Josh Bell. The Pirates wipe out the Cardinals here in game one. Josh Bell, his first career walk-off hit. Set up away, ball elevated a little bit, gets in the air, and there's a little pocket there where the ball closes in, and he hits his first career walk-off home run, a three-run home run, and the Cardinals got a two-run home run from Jerko to lead in the first inning, but he never could add on. Now you mention it, the struggles with the lefty, the risky run. And walking McCutcheon to get to Bell, and he makes the Cardinals pay. The postgame show is coming up. The Cardinals drop a tough one in the first game back from the All-Star break. Bell, he knew it. 5-2, our final.